little while back, I decided I wanted to build an operating system. Well, actually a really long ways back. But unfortunately, it was a little bit over my head at that time. And uh, what happens usually when you decide you want to build an operating system is you do a quick Google search, how to build an operating system. And the first thing you're hit with is a bunch of assembly code. And it is not pretty. And you look at it and you go, all right, I give up. I'll never build an operating system. It's either that or C. And then if you even look at building drivers, it's a whole nother thing. So eventually I got around to thinking, you know what, wouldn't it be great if there was a programming language dedicated to building operating systems? And the only one that currently exists, as far as I know, is C, and you have to build your own drivers. So, I got a little book on assembly, and I decided that it was time to build Pong in assembly and see how hard it was. And about halfway through that, I, uh, I scrapped it because I don't really like assembly, and I immediately started work on the language. This is the IDE for that language. It's built in Godot, because Godot has really good, already pre-built tools for development since they have their own GD script. And so I decided, okay, well, um, we'll use this for the IDE. We'll build the, um, the programming language in, in a DLL for C Sharp, just an external class library, and then we'll import it. And it turns out that kind of works. So I wanted to show it off. So here's the program, Pong, in my programming language. So as you go, it goes faster and faster, and then if it gets past you, it resets. So yeah, I think I probably will give you a little bit of an idea of how this works. Um, instead of just dumping a bunch of information, we can actually look at the code. Um, I guess an easy way to uh, show it would be to go here. So basically it takes in a file, it calls translate code. This is a really long process, but um, first it profiles content, which basically goes through and assigns labels for every little um, structure I have, whether it be classes, parentheses, variables, methods, etc. I've been working on this for about three months now, and I decided it was finally okay enough to show. It's still extraordinarily early alpha. And all it does is, uh, <laughs> you type in a file name, which I have a shortcut for the file I'm currently working on, so that I don't have to type the whole thing in. Uh, I won't step through all the code, but to put it pretty simply, it just sort of uh, goes through and um, converts it. And what you get is this assembly code language here, as you can see, being output. And then, um, yep, that's the whole thing all the way up to there. See, ASM86 code. And I have uh, my code here, so. It's kind of a, a, a smart way to do it because um, actually learning hex codes um, and doing things directly to binary is a lot harder than just doing the assembly. Um, and there's a lot fewer resources on that. So that's why I decided to go with that. Um, I'll show you kind of what the code actually looks like in the IDE here. So we actually have highlighting, like string highlighting and stuff. Uh, this is the class name, hello. Um, I specify that it's a Phi class because I'm gonna be supporting assembly later, so eventually you'll just do ASM dot. And there is some support for it, but it doesn't integrate well right now. But you do like test, and then it would be like uh, some sort of thing like move um, zero, or move EAX. move zero into EAX, that would be an example of an assembly instruction there. Um, but I don't really have that fully integrated yet. There's a lot that has to go into that. Um, I tried to make all the variable declarations three characters in my language. 
you can see it's BLN for Boolean, um, integer, um, and then of course up here there was string, str. And right now I just have integer and string as the main, so there's like Boolean, byte, integer, and string, um, because what I found is that um, it takes a whole different set of instructions to really use floating points. So like it's fmul instead of mol, which is multiply the instructions for that in assembly. So I just wanted to focus on one set and get it working before doing all the others. So that won't be added for a little while. But you're still able to make arcade games. So which I find pretty fun. But other than that, there's not a, a ton in here. I mean, there's a interrupt timer you can set up, a keyboard interrupt you can set up. Here's the override method. This is how methods are done. They've got the little square brackets for the timer event. So everything inside of here runs uh, every tick, which is pretty, I think I set it to like 100 millis, um, megahertz or something like that. Um, and of course, these are all just the if statements here, um, increasing the ball speed as uh, collisions happen. These are comments where it says collision. Uh, that's a hashtag for comment. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff done, but I mean, we're, I'm only three months into this. Most languages take a few years before they're really usable. Um, so we'll see, and this is very ambitious, so I don't know how soon it will actually be usable um, beyond just tinkering. Draw rectangles, obviously I have a call, which I'm using call to signify that a function is happening. I like when things are explicit in the code. I don't really like it when too much is inferred. Um, I do want there to be a lot of inference so that it's not, but I want that to be about stuff that isn't, um, I want it to be very clear when you're calling a function and very clear when, when there's a method. So for instance, um, you can see here's a method, right? And here is the call. And then here's the value assignment. So down W becomes is OS is key down. W, um, and then it ends here. This is the function ending. So, and then the classes are inside curly brackets. So each thing has its own distinct um, appearance, which makes it very easy to read quickly. Um, and these are the parameters, of course, inside of draw rectangle after the colon. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, there's a really bad keyboard driver, as you can see, because I'm able to use the keyboard and get keys and stuff. Um, it needs to be reworked, but, um, and then there's a timer, and there's, it loads a sector two. If, if you know from operating system development, there's bootloader and then sector two. And you can tell which ones are which by their label. So this one's labeled bootloader. This one's labeled OS, which would be sector two. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of customization beyond that. I could show another one here. This just asks for your name, I guess. Um, let's run that. It says, what is your name? Brandon. It says, hello, Brandon. Press any key to continue. And it says, welcome to the file language. So it does work. Uh, the language works. But uh, I'm, it's still very early on. If you're someone who likes to tinker and you kind of like the idea of messing with low level stuff, it might pique your interest. Um, my end goal is to make uh, operating system development as easy as application development is currently. Um, and by doing that, I would um, hopefully make it um, much more accessible. And the way to do that is to essentially pre-build all the basic stuff that people need, like keyboard drivers, mouse drivers, USB drivers, network cards, um, Wi-Fi, um, this type of thing. 
and then just have it so that it's uh, included in the code for you um, and accessible. So, and then of course it spits out like for instance, um, if we go to here and I run it, um, there's assembly language code which is compiled. And if I bring this up, you can see down here it says um, drawing.asm. So, so this drawing class goes into this file, which is big. <laughs> it's uh, you can you can see how much time you save in comparison. So, like for instance, here's one of the if statements. It has to move the value into the EAX register called the value write or writey. It has to add the paddle speed to it and then it has to move it back in so that it's assigned. And that's if, uh, and let's see, which if seven? Okay, here's if seven. And that only happens if the bot write value when compared to the screen height is less than, uh, yeah, is less than the screen height. So this is not very easy or very user friendly to use. Um, here's a bunch of how math works. Um, for instance, you're adding a value here, um, but yeah, and it just goes on and on and on and on until you see all the variables. Uh, here's part of the keyboard driver with the scan code table. Anyways, you can see how much time you save by using this sort of thing, and I'm kind of really happy with where I have it for three months of work on it, but um, it's got years ahead of it before it's uh, easy to use. <laughs>